In this chapter, we'll finish out our tour of the Mix console by exploring the rack and its audio processing capabilities. If you open the window layout, you can see that there are six panes available in the center of the Mix console. We'll be spending most of our time in this chapter discussing the channel racks. At the very top is the channel overview. This is simply a miniature set of level meters that lets you see all the levels of all your channels at once. Next is the meter bridge. You can resize it by dragging the edges, and you can set up its behavior using the functions dropdown. The next pane is the equalizer curve area. This is a surprisingly powerful tool because it gives you direct access to the EQ settings in addition to the visual feedback. When you hover over the curve, you'll see the nodes appear. And if you single click, it opens a graphic editor. You can click and drag to change the frequency and gain of any node, then hold down the shift key and drag to affect its Q value. You can also right click on the EQ curve and call up options like deactivate or invert copy and even access presets. At the bottom are options for A-B comparison. If I change the EQ and then reopen this menu, you see that the switch to value changed. This lets you switch back and forth between the two. And much like the options we saw in chapter one, almost all of this can be assigned to a key command for faster access. Keep in mind, we're not even down to the main EQ area yet. This is all available within the EQ curve display. Now I'm going to jump over the next pane and look at the Pictures pane. Double click in the box to open up the Picture menu. Use the buttons on the left to navigate through the factory pictures or your own pictures. If you want to get rid of an existing picture, click on the Reset button. And just above the faders is the Notepad pane, which is pretty self-explanatory. At the bottom are the faders and panner, with controls for Mute, Solo, Listen, and Editor. Now we'll go over the channel settings editor in a later chapter. Okay, now it's time to get into the channel rack. To make this easier to see, I'll disable pretty much everything else for the moment. Click on the racks icon to see everything that's available in your channel rack. Click all racks to enable the entire suite. In the new mix console, you can see multiple racks at the same time. For example, inserts and sends, and so forth. The routing rack has the input options at the top and the output at the bottom. The next pane gives you access to a dedicated high cut and low cut filter, the gain control, which is pre fader, and the phase invert. Next are the inserts. You can click the square to load or store an effects chain or the inserts from a favorite track preset. And when you click into one of the slots, you'll see the new quick access menu. This is a terrific innovation and you'll see this same basic approach to finding things used all over Cubase. You have a couple of options here. First, you could find and expand the type of effect you want. And you can see that the editor for your plugin opens as soon as you select the effect. You can use the plus and minus keys to expand or collapse the tree, or you can use the search function. The next row in the channel rack is the equalizer, and you can see another EQ curve window. You can see all four bands, and each one has adjustments for gain, frequency, and Q. The button next to the letters EQ at the top is the bypass button. In the top of each EQ band is a power switch to enable the band and a visual indicator of which EQ type is active. If you click on this indicator, you'll see that you now have the option to select the type of EQ for each band. If you right click on a specific parameter, you can access quick controls and automation. Okay, now it's time to get into the heart of the new mix console, the channel strip. The channel strip gives you all the functions of a traditional mixing board in every channel. To load a slot, simply click on it. Or you can use the triangle to select from a range of options with some slots, like the compressor. Now the number of knobs goes up quickly, but remember that you can select a group of channels, press Q-Link, and then move them all at once. And here's what a channel strip looks like with everything enabled. Now it's beyond the scope of this video to go over what all of the parameters do. 
Obviously, noise gates are used to mute open mics when there's no signal coming through, and compressors work like automatic volume controls. What you do need to know is that when you see the letters SC, that means sidechain, and you can click on them to activate the sidechain feature. Sidechaining simply allows for a device or parameter to be triggered by one of the audio tracks in the project. For example, the kick drum could be set to control the compressor for that rhythmic pumping effect so popular in a lot of club music. Once you activate this mode, you'll see the sidechain added to the output routing options. So if I want to have the signal in track 1, control the envelope shaper. Enable the envelope shaper's sidechain, then open the routing tab for track 1 and direct it to the sidechain. You can click and drag the green EQ position bar to move the EQ within the channel strip. And one quick note, there's a scroll bar at the side for moving up and down within the rack. You can also use the mouse wheel to scroll. One of the coolest new features is the ability to click and drag settings between tracks. You can also copy and paste items between tracks. And once you have your channel configured perfectly, scroll to the top of the strip and save it as a strip preset. And remember that you can bypass a strip by clicking on the button next to the word Strip. Or you can use the Global Strip Bypass button at the very top to bypass all the channel strips at once. The last rack section I want to look at is the Sends rack. You can click here to open up your send options. But watch this. You can now right-click and select Add Effects Channel right from the mixer. Then pick out what effect you want. Then click and drag to increase the amount of the signal going to that effect. We also have rack slots for cues, quick controls, and panels, which we'll cover in later chapters. The last thing I want to show you before we move on is the rack configuration control. This lets you store up to four rack configurations so that you can switch back and forth quickly. You can even choose to turn off the rack entirely and drop down to just a bank of faders if you want to. 